Okay. Uh, good evening, and I would like to uh, officially call uh, to order the Tuesday, March 7th, 2023 meeting of the Bolton Conservation Commission and pursuant to the extension of Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this public meeting of the Town of Bolton Conservation Commission is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can access Brian, you froze. If you can hear this me. Meeting, what phone, cell phone, or personal computer using Zoom? And just a reminder, uh, some guidelines for those using Zoom. Um, please utilize the chat or raise hand function if you wish to address the board. People will be uh, will remain on mute until they're actually addressed by the board. And then we require our participants to uh, display their first and last name as their username. And I'm sorry, Rebecca, did I manage to get all that in? I, I noticed my computer you was did, telling me yes. that my internet connection was unstable for a minute there. And uh, I apologize. Um, our internet has had some instability issues since the snowstorm. It's a little upsetting. Oh. Um, so if I, uh, if I dump out for some reason, I will try to get on quickly again. Okay, thank you for that. I'll grab my phone, I'll set up a personal hotspot or something like that. <laughs> Um, we did get that though, Brian. It didn't catch up. Okay. All right. So um, that said, the first this is the um, this is our first hearing on this. Am I correct, Rebecca? I know we've done other yes. things for this project, but this, all right. So I'm opening it for the first time. Yep. All right. In that case, um, the Bolton Conservation Commission will now open a public hearing <clears throat> under Mass General Law, Chapter One Thirty One, Section Forty, and the Bolton Bylaw. Chapter 233 to consider a notice of intent for 711 slash 713 Main Street DEP file number. Oh, we don't have a DEP file number yet, maybe. Okay. Um, so for map parcel, uh, well, 711 slash 713 Main Street, um, a number of improvements uh, being proposed. Rebecca, is the applicant or representative for the applicant here this evening? You know, we haven't. Uh started our part yet yes um tim hass is present i believe a uh, nick king and a few other members of their team are also present to provide a summary if you would like that would be fantastic um and whichever member of the team would like to start us off thank you mr thank you mr chair i'll i'll start myself i'm tim hess with studio and c2 architects here in maynard um joined by Nick King, also of Studio at C2, uh, Dan Carr, who just popped on the screen, our civil from Samsky and McNary, and Dave Crossman, our wetlands consultant from B and C Associates. Uh, I spoke with uh, the parcel owner, uh, Craig Boverd, yesterday. I know it's his intent to be with us tonight. I don't see him yet on the call, but I expect He'll join us up. Oh, there he is. He just joined us. I also, Great. just to note, Tim, I apologize for the interruption. I had to mute Nick quickly because there was a little bit of feedback, but just for you to note okay. as you go forward. Thank you. Yeah, he and I, are. our equipment is in close proximity, so we may have to manage that <laughs> this evening. Sorry. Um. Before I launch in, I, I want to just ask a question relating to the schedule. I know you've got several other things to get to tonight. I see that uh, there is another item up. You've got scheduled for 715. I'm wondering uh, how you know I can sort of plow through an introduction and summary. I assume that we'll want to stay out of the weeds, uh, at least for the beginning here. Is it, Mr. Chair, do you imagine? Um, uh sticking to a strict 715 no i mean i mean we we can definitely go over 715 um but i was going to say tim it looks like we don't have a dep file number yet um so my guess is we'll have to continue tonight anyways yep to a future meeting um so generally speaking and i know we're, we're familiar with the site oftentimes we'll want to come out and take a look and ask for a few things to be pointed out in the field um, so that said, a high level overview tonight, um, yeah. 
kind of given us that introduction and then hopefully that'll allow us to get into the weeds a little bit more after we've had a chance to really go out and be a little bit more familiar with the site and what we're talking about. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's that sounds helpful and appropriate. And I think we've got a long list of things to get through. So um and, but why that's don't, it. Why like don't going I just... over 715, that that that's fine. I mean within reason, but that that's fine. We're not gonna Great. Hold. Great. Go ahead. Okay. Um if it's possible, uh we'd like to have Nick share his screen. Yeah, Re Rebecca, if you could allow that, please. Great. So just by way of overview, uh, I think you all know where we are. We're on the parcel here designated 711, 713 Main Street. And the parcel is really only a little bit bigger than that smallest rectangle that would contain all of those three buildings that we're looking at. Uh, you can see uh, the stream as it, uh, the stream Great Brook as it exits our immediate east of the parcel. Um, you know, the, the, the broad overview here is, uh, we, we have a, um, you know, a, 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 a relic, uh, an, a, an aging and neglected relic of Bolton's historic past, uh, positioned in a, in a spot that, um, to my eye, identifies something like the center of the town. Um, uh, there is, uh, you know, a, a kind of uh, significant value to uh, the architectural and civic fabric of this place. Um, and it has suffered for decades and longer through neglect and um, degradation not not only the the buildings there but um uh you know there's been those those buildings have had a, a not all that well considered relationship to the landscape at least with regard to uh the conservation aspect of the landscape um so uh really our aspiration for this project is to kind of uh, you know, we, we recognize what we see as the the great value of this um, this relic in a way, and and it's our intent to kind of bring it into the 21st century and make it a viable, uh, productive piece of real estate and an investment for our client and a contributor to the culture and the commerce of the town. Um, uh, certainly some of that has to do with the relationships within itself, uh, you know, the three buildings and, and the mixed use aspect of our, of our project. Um, and some of it has to do with adjacency to resource areas from a conservation standpoint and adjacency to uh, kind of the cultural resources of the town common um, and the like. Uh, so all, all of that is to say, you know, there there is a certain there is a certain lens through which, you know, one could imagine looking at a project like this and saying, "Geez, this is just a place where, you know, in in a in a in other circumstances, you might look at the presence of the wetlands and the stream and say, this is just a place where buildings shouldn't be." Um, in this case, it's our it's our belief and the objective of our project to say these buildings are important and valuable and and ought to be uh, made viable for the present and the ongoing future. Um, and from a conservation standpoint, you know, we recognize that uh, this that revival effort. Uh, requires a number of what could be regarded as pretty aggressive relationships uh, to the resource area. Um, so we have done our best to demonstrate a sensitivity um, uh, to, um, uh, you know, a, a couple of the primary strategies are, you know, where today there is something like zero stormwater management on site, um, we will be, uh, you know, 
substantially increasing the pervious surface. The whole breadth of the courtyard today is paved. That'll be replaced with pervious surface. Um, there are no gutters on any of those three buildings today. Those will all um, receive uh, rainwater gutters and conductors and through a um, pretty robust system of uh, rainwater uh, collection, storage, detention, and recharge. Um, uh, we do propose to make a number of relatively smallish physical additions to the buildings here. You may mostly or all be aware that construction is, uh, renovation is underway now as of roughly a month ago uh, at 7-Eleven. Um, you all were participants in the um, NOI for the barn demolition, which happened uh, toward the end of last year. So the the kind of pale green color we see up there is now uh, a kind of open demolition site. Um, and uh, our proposals include also a uh, construction of the wraparound porch that Nick is gesturing to with his cursor there. And then uh, and then this kind of civic scaled and um, uh, in a way public piece that uh, I think you may all remember, uh, we propose to build on uh, that bit of town land. Um, uh, the reminder, if graphically one might imagine that the common begins at the access road, but in fact, the common begins something like four or six feet to the west of our building. So there's, I'm going to make up the number, call it 40 or 50 feet of uh, what looks just like lawn to the east of that access road now. Um, so we're proposing to uh, add what we call a boardwalk and a big front porch there and uh, some parking spaces. Um, uh, so, you know, in addition to uh, improving uh, what we can, we believe, with regard to stormwater management um, in uh, replacing the barn, uh, we have, uh, Craig has found through some uh, other local resources, a, a pretty wonderful, uh, authentic antique barn that uh, he purchased in far northern Maine and brought it uh, down to Massachusetts. And it's been um, disassembled and kind of tagged and numbered and is awaiting reconstruction here on site. Um, you know, where the where the former barn was built on a uh, essentially continuous foundation broken primarily for uh, the kind of runway or sluice way of the of the stream or the Great Brook through um, through the the uh, uh, understory of the building. You know, our new barn, we propose to place that on a number of piers, uh, point loads, uh, you know, with the intent to step as lightly as possible in uh, displacing the smallest amount of surface area, I suppose, um, uh, in uh, in the resource area. Um, uh, then, Nick, if you'll go to our, yeah, that center tab, I think the NOI docs. You can see throughout our application, we've broken it down, and I and I hope that the commission will find it helpful. Um, the, uh, the, the kind of numbering system, uh, one through 14, where we kind of work our way through, uh, you know, it's our hope and suspicion that um, these asks are sort of worthy of individual attention and it may be more helpful to kind of uh to work through the the kind of relevant uh aspects and and um mitigation measures etc in a one by one basis um and uh i think the the last little bit by way of introduction um if nick is going to pull up the video and just play 20 or 30 seconds from the beginning and the end of that just as a refresher. I think you've all probably seen this before, but I just want to run a few seconds um, to, to kind of contrast uh, our proposed condition with the uh, the kind of early overhead drone shots. 
can you and, read it to me? Uh, yeah, go ahead and hit the play. And I'll just narrate a couple of things that have changed. We have not updated the video to reflect a few changes. Um, they primarily, the if you look at the portion of our site in which we daylight the brook, we're proposing to daylight a little bit less of that. So we're not proposing a new footbridge over that, but to um, daylight some smaller fraction of that. And then uh, to the west, where last year we had imagined a sort of boardwalk that connected our front porch back to the public parking uh, to the north that is no longer part of the project. Um, and uh, so so I'll ask you to, to disregard that. And there are a million other little changes, but I think the spirit of the project is is otherwise uh, largely consistent with this little model you see here. So just if we can just let it run another several seconds, I think it's a good overview. And now just skip way ahead, Nick. Great. So thanks so much for letting us introduce that little bit. Um, uh, if, well, at, at your pleasure, Mr. Chair, however you'd like to take it from here. Sure. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And I'll probably put it out to other commission members to see what they think. <clears throat> um, I appreciate it. In, in noticing the notice that you had all, the 14 points and the 14 different projects. Um, Looking at those, I think most of those you can point out to us in the field. There might be some that I ask you to mark out. Um, but I mean, if you kind of want to quickly go through them, I think that's fine. But I, I really stress that that quickly part to just kind of give an introduction of what it is. Because I think if we have a chance to go out in the field, take a look at it, then then we can really have better questions for you. Sure. Uh, rather than us trying to think of them tonight. Um, I guess that that's the way I would lean. If that is, um, and I'll ask any other commission members um, comfortable with that. Would you like more in depth this evening? Um, does that seem like a good way to proceed? Yeah, sounds sounds like a good idea, Brian. Okay. Yeah, agreed. All right. In that case, Tim, if you, if you can, if you just want to move quickly through those fourteen points, uh, you know, if we can possibly, ah, there we go. Sure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so item number one, we think is relatively straightforward. The current uh, remnants of the barn are uh, largely not useful to the kind of revitalization of the barn and, and most of the, the fragments of foundation and other things that remain there, uh, it's our intent to haul them off site. Um, one exception to that is that there is a wall that uh, formed the boundary between the barn and the courtyard. Uh, that wall also uh, is the um, the uh, south boundary of Great Brook. Uh, and is um, not in perfect condition, but is in pretty sound condition. Um, you know, our first our first uh, project would simply be to restore. I would say consolidate and restore that uh, wall in place. Um, item two, there are uh, there. You'll all be familiar. There is a very aggressive uh, growth of Japanese knotweed um, back there, and uh, you know our understanding is that will be a. Uh, a, a multi-stepped and multi-phased and elongated process to get rid of it, but uh, beginning that and kind of putting a plan in place and beginning to execute that, uh, we've we've labeled that together with the removal of trees that we're calling hazardous. Now, um, there are some trees on our parcel. Some of those trees are, in fact, on public land, uh, but the ones we've identified in our uh, notice of intent 
are of such a proximity to the uh, barn that we think it's uh, probably safest and smartest and most beneficial to remove those. Um, item three, there is a, a, a kind of a funky and hazardous condition that, uh, and frankly, a little bit wobbly condition that exists uh, in um, the exterior vertical circulation of the building number 713. Um, it is a switchback stair that connects first and second floor uh, east facing porches that is positioned somewhat tenuously on a thin concrete slab over the stream. Um, so we would uh, plan to get rid of that um, uh, chain link fence that surrounds much of the site we would like to remove. Um, item five is the uh, construction of the barn. Um, item six, the uh, wraparound porch at 713, that's the gray building with the candle shop in it, wraparound in the sense that it has an east-facing leg that addresses our internal courtyard, and then it wraps 90 degrees on Main Street with a south-facing porch that addresses Main Street. Um, item seven, uh, our uh, paved driver courtyard, the, the the full expanse of land between the three buildings on the parcel is now uh, paved and impervious. And uh, our plan uh, removes that and replaces it with a, uh, a uh, pea gravel. Um, item eight is the rainwater stormwater management. Um, uh, as I explained before, gutters and downspouts, uh, rain barrels, cisterns, detention, and recharge. Um, item nine, uh, the planning of native species uh, throughout the parcel. Uh, item 10, the daylighting of Great Brook. Um, and you, we've, through uh, dialogue with uh, Rebecca in the last several days or maybe a couple of weeks, we have um, added a little bit of additional uh, information that uh, I hope is you, you all have had a moment with um, in an attempt to uh, breathe a little bit more life into our uh, aspirations and intent there. Um, item 11 is that sort of uh, public facing, uh, you know, grand scaled front porch addressing the common um, 12 is the parking spaces and the, the uh, permeable surface uh, of those parking spaces uh, between that porch and the common. Um, 13 would be the construction of the bridge from the north end of that porch uh, to the uh, center bay of our new barn. Um, and then uh, item 14 is the installation of a water wheel within the barn, um, uh, reaching down to the brook. Um, so a lot of pieces and parts, some of them somewhat closely related, some of them not very closely related to each other. Um, uh, right. The... Interested in any more coloration on any one of those, Mr. Chair? Um, I'll, I'll open it up to the, the rest of the commission in a minute. But um, what I would say, and again, when I, I was looking through them, um, if we can set up a site visit, I think most of the things you just went through, we can point out locations and areas uh, and you know understand the walls we're talking about. Um, the I, What I would say is if you could mark out somehow, um, I'd put down... Um, Basically, the, the porch and the and the boardwalk, um, and the parking spaces. It doesn't have to be exact, exact, but just so we have an idea how far it's coming out from the building, and then again, yep. how far the parking spaces would come out from the building. Um, I can see where it's laid out along there. Okay. Uh, just somehow marked out where those porches, parking spaces, going to be are going to be. Um, I think and just to kind of point out, and and one thing I'd love to see is. Um, if you could kind of demark where Great Brook would daylight, in other words, where yeah. we think the, the beginning opening would be, 
Um, I think those are some of the things I'd, I'd like to see in the field. Um, and and I, again, I think this is a good checklist that we can just kind of walk down while we are in the field. Um, but I'll open it up to other commission members. Anything else you hear more about this evening? Anything specific you'd like to see at a site visit? Um, any other comments or questions? Not seeing any right now. Um, Mr. Chair, just as, as ahead, a matter Tim. of as a matter of protocol, uh, we'll contact uh, what DPW and uh, is there oh, somebody Mark in particular Mind. about the common? Brian, can I just interject quickly about that? Please, Rebecca. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so I was actually going to ask uh, Tim or your team, did you provide, because I'm not seeing in the packet, a signature from a property owner representing the town, whether that be the town administrator or the select board, because that is required as part of the notice of intent filing. So when, if you have yet to provide that, which I don't see it in the packet, um, that would be the appropriate contact for marking anything out oh, so that that signatory okay. would have given you that contact. I don't know. Yep the answer to that for this project, but I would definitely encourage you to reach out to the town administrator as soon as possible okay. to get that addressed. Yeah, I was I was in touch with Jenny earlier today, so I'll write her okay. back tonight and see if we can line that up. Yeah, and just provide them with, um, it's the same signature form, just an additional one from the notice of intent, um, page nine of nine. So just make sure that, we get the appropriate town representative to sign that being the property owner it's typically the town administrator and or the select board um sorry brian i didn't mean to interject no no i was, no, just, that's I was flipping that, through that the packet at the of, same time uh, that, that answered the majority of that question <clears throat> excuse me i was just going to add um that if if, if we're having, you know, if we're able to set up a site visit, and we, we really can't get an answer on that. Can you mark on the town property or not? If we just bring a big old tape measure um, and we can kind of look it out into the field again, if there's any question or if you can't get an answer on that, I don't want that to hold something up. We can just measure it out in the field. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so, oh, uh, so if commission members don't have any um, additional things they, they necessarily want to see in the field or any additional comments at this time, I'd say, Rebecca, do you have any comments, questions at this time? Is there anything specific you would like to see out in the field? Um, I don't at this time, Brian. I think you highlighted everything that I'd like to see out in the field. I had already in prior correspondence with the applicant had requested that they provide the breakdown of the riverfront area and the square footage that's already been altered, their proposed alterations as that is of concern to me. Um, and in terms of the daylighting, I had also requested that they submit additional information because the commission cannot be telling them we're designing their project. Not that that had been suggested, but just making that clear. So they did provide um, a couple different options there along with essentially why the different option would be utilized in that area. Um, so I think if the commission would wanna review that before the next meeting, that would be great, yeah. Um, but as of right now, no, Brian, you highlighted the items um, that I thought were appropriate. The only item that maybe I missed when you were asking for it is just the extent of the barn on site. Did you ask for that? I did not, but if-, okay. if if possible, Tim, if yeah, yeah, just the the proposed area or footprint. Yeah, just the barn. four corners yeah. of sure. the barn. Foot base. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, I should ask: any, Are there any members of the public here tonight to comment or have questions on this particular hearing? And again, seeing none. Um, and I do apologize. I did not take a roll call of. Oh, Not sure if I lost you. You broke up slightly just then, Brian. I was going to. I was going to say I was going to the beginning of the meeting up slightly um, and forgot to take a roll call of members who are present. Yeah. Um, so if we could uh, just uh, digress for a moment, and if I can call for a roll call of members who are present at this evening's meeting, um, I am Brian Barabee, 
Laurie Stevenson. Paul Branwald. Jim Garrity. Jillian Glasanos. And Rebecca Longo. <laughs> okay. Um, so that out of the way now. Um, Rebecca, our next meeting, March 14th. Uh, no. Oh. Uh, actually, let me, I believe it's the 21st. Uh, you were right. First let third. Me. Yeah. Um, yes. Our the first available time on the 21st. Uh, that is going to be, I believe, 7, 745. I, I can't recall. I apologize. It's either 730 or 745. Um. Well, I'm going to say 7.35. That's fine. All right. So um, that's it. Tim, are you okay with us continuing to our next uh, meeting and this giving us a chance to set up a site visit in between? Yes. Uh, would you like us to participate in a site visit or just prepare for it? Um, if possible, if you can have at least one rep there just to point out some of the things. If, if there's questions on site, that's always... Uh, appreciated. Yeah, that would be our preference as well. Um, uh, how how will we proceed in scheduling that? You, uh, so I was say, I'll let I you reach, handle this. Yeah. I'll reach what how we handle this typically is I will reach out to the commission members individually and see their availability. Once I get a couple dates of when the majority will be, then I will reach out to you and offer those dates or a date in time that would work. Um, okay. And then from there you can schedule it. I would suggest it would be helpful to have your uh, wetland specialist, whoever is doing the uh, stream daylighting present it's Mr. or Crossman overseeing here. that, um, that may be helpful to the commission. Great. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll look forward to that. Excellent. All right, that said, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we continue the public hearing for 711 slash 713 Main Street until our next public meeting, Tuesday, March 21st at 7.35 p.m. Um, do I hear a second for continuing? Second. second. All those in favor, starting with Lori. Aye. Paul. Aye. Jim. Aye. Jillian. Aye. And Rebecca, I'm an aye as well. Uh, Brian, do you need the agenda again? Nope, I, I'm good. Uh, are you good to continue? And this is 727. Is this a continuation or is this? Okay. Nope. We'll, we'll hop off. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. And uh, Rebecca, we'll see you all in a couple of weeks. And, and before that, at okay. In uh, the uh, interest of avoiding more break ins, my name is Matt Morrow well, representing. Hold, hold on, man. I, I, I actually have to open the hearing. I haven't had a chance oh, to yeah. do it. Sorry, so, Matt. Sorry, anyway, guys. It's all right. Rebecca, this is a continuation, right? No, it's an amendment. No, it, this, this is, is an amendment, new. too. Okay. Okay. All right. So in that case, I do need to open fresh. All right. Um, so in the um, so the Bolton Conservation Commission will now open a public hearing under Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Bolton Bylaw, Chapter 233, to consider a notice of intent amendment to 727 Main Street, uh, DEP file number 112-0722. Um, and, and now if, if you would not mind, Matt, if you would be comfortable giving us a, a quick update or uh, an overview of what we're looking for here. If I may share my screen. Yes, Please, we I should be able to. So essentially, real quick, the, as the commission will recall, um, we, at 727 Main Street, we received an order of conditions to do the septic system replacement um, that was in the riverfront. Um, subsequently to that meeting, um, we had, in order to get the septic system in, one of the abutters had granted permission to access their property for the equipment to go through. Subsequent to the meeting, the permission, for whatever reason, and, you know, it's their property, they have the right, they rescinded that permission. Um, the equipment and the hardware needed are too big to access through the garage. 
So what we're requesting the amendment for is for the garage to basically be removed, um, temporarily stabilized. The septic system would then go in and be stabilized and then the garage would be rebuilt in, in the existing footprint. Um, we were going to ask originally on the amendment to just have the garage removed and temporary stabilization put in place, but subsequently to that, um, in speaking with Mr. Savage, oh, my, both my client and myself have spoken with Michael, and he said that the foundation at a minimum had to be put in within six months to be uh, in order to maintain their grandfathering under zoning. So what I'm requesting is to have the order amended to allow this garage that I'm circling with my cursor to be removed, um, temporarily stabilized so that this operation can go ahead. And then once this is concluded, the garage would be rebuilt in the same footprint. That's it. Okay. Um, it's, I know it's, it's an extreme to have to do this in order to get the septic system in, but at this point, you guys know the size of that lot. It's the only way to do it now. Uh, that's I was, I, that was one of my first questions is, is there any other practicable way of really addressing it? I, cause I, yeah, I, I, I think it's pretty extreme what you have to do. And I can imagine that's not by choice. Um, I mean, I, I, I'll put it up to other commission members too. And, and Rebecca, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I, I think it, Matt, it's definitely something we, we can condition. I can see the reasons why you need to condition it. I understand the reasons why we need to upgrade and repair the septic. Um, yeah, I, I'd be curious. I'd, have, I'd want to look through the NOI a little bit to see, you know, as far as I'm sure building the garage, we would want to have something about stockpiling materials outside the resource area to the extent possible. Uh, you know, I, well, I, the front yard is yeah. out of the buffer zone, but I mean, it's all in the riverfront, but this would be the maximum extent. Would yeah, be out. yeah, something along those so that it's basically as far from the, the riverfront as possible, which would be the front yard area. Um, I know I'm, I haven't had a chance to read through the full plan. You say temporary stabilization. What do you know what you're proposing for a temporary Loman stabilization? Loam and seed. Loam and seed. Yeah, it's going to be uh, dug out in the same footprint and a new foundation put in. So, I mean, Loam and seed is your your cheapest and your most reliable alternative. Makes sense. Um, and um, well, let me put it out to other commission members. Any other commission members have initial questions, comments, or thoughts? All right. And uh, Rebecca, I'd love to ask you if you have initial thoughts or comments. I don't. Um, Matt's done quite a bit of due diligence and the property owners to try and figure out the best approach to this. Um, and we reached out to DEP as well to just confirm that they would accept the same in terms of amending it um, or the, the process rather. And I have no issue. I understand that that's how it needs to be done for the septic. And as long as you know, there's stabilization while there's no structure there. And during the area being altered, I don't have a significant problem with it. Okay. Um, I also did provide the plan directly to the DEP reviewer who okay. reviewed the initial NOI. So he has a copy of the updated plan as well. Great. Okay. Um, are there any members of the public here tonight uh, to comment or have questions about this particular project? No. Yep, not seeing any. Um, any members of the commission see any reason why we shouldn't issue this amendment as drafted? I, again, I might ask that we we add in the language that the stockpiling of materials for the barn replacement be kept as far away from the riverfront as is practicable on the property. Um, but I'm I can't think of anything else I would add at this point. Uh, any commission members have. Anything they would like to see added? Any concerns or, or additional thoughts regarding this? And again, not seeing any. Okay. In that case, I'd like to make a motion that we close um, the public hearing for the amendment to the plans for 727 Main Street. Do I hear a second for closing? Second. All those in favor, starting with Lori. Aye. Paul. Aye. Jim. Aye. Jillian? Aye. And Rebecca, I am an aye as well. Hey, thank you very much, folks. And Rebecca, as usual, when you do come up with the order of conditions, um, if you can get it to me, 
I will promptly record it. Okay, perfect. I will definitely communicate that to you, Matt. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, thanks, Matt. Good night, guys. All right, take care. Um, Rebecca, oh, did, did we have a question from Robin? No, I think she was oh, waving. Oh, just say, oh, good night. <laughs> I think, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> she's saying yes. <laughs> um, so we closed it. We did not technically vote on it. Um, I, I'm happy to vote on it and close it out tonight. Um, is there any, I mean, I, I was going to say, sometimes we, we can uh, wait and vote on the next meeting to give you a chance to write it up. But with this particular one, is there any reason you can see why we wouldn't possibly just vote on it right now? No, and to be honest, it's already drafted because we're just amending the existing. Yep. So because there's only the couple of conditions you've already stated, I, I don't have a particular problem with that where the meat of it's already drafted. Okay. In that case, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the amendment for the notice of intent for 727 Main Street um, as drafted, submitted, and amended at this evening's meeting. Um, do I hear a second for accepting the amendment or approving the amendment, the NOI amendment for 727 Main Street? Second. All right. All those in favor, starting with Lori. Aye. Paul. Aye. Jim. Aye. Jillian. Aye. And Rebecca, I'm and I as well. Great. Thank you. Um, all right. Okay. Um, all right. So the Bolton Conservation Commission will now continue the public hearing for the notice of intent for South Bolton Road map 2.C parcel 16, DEP yeah. file number 112-0720. Yeah. Um, and oh, as fun. hopefully people can see from our agenda, this uh, hearing is going to be continued uh, um, until the MEPA review process is completed, hopefully in April. Um, Do you want to say something? Yeah, I wanted to ask yeah. you. So that said, I'm going to make a motion that we continue the public hearing yeah, for yeah, the notice of intent for South Bolton Road yeah, DEP yeah, file yeah, number 112-02. Yeah. They already go to uh, 0720 until our next public hearing Tuesday, March 21st at 7 45 p.m. Do I hear a second for continuing? Second. All those in favor, starting with Lori. Aye. Paul. Aye. Jim. Aye. Jillian. Aye. And Rebecca, I'm in I as well. All right, and time-wise, so the uh, Bolton Conservation Commission will now continue the public hearing um, under Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Bolton Bylaw Chapter 233, discussing the notice of intent for 159 Ball Ballville Road, Escalante International. Um, and again, as hopefully people can see from our agenda, um, the applicant is asked to continue this meeting so we can set up our site visit and uh, get some other things in place. Um, so, um, sorry, I, was, I, I lost my train of thought. Um, so that said, um, I'd like to make a motion that we continue the public hearing for 159 Ballville Road, Escalante International until our next public meeting, Tuesday, March 21st at 7.50 p.m. Uh, do I hear a second for continuing? Second. second. Uh, all those in favor, starting with Lori. Aye. Paul. Aye. Jim. Aye. Jillian. Aye. And Rebecca, I'm an I as well. Great. Thank you very much. Do you want me to run through the updates? Um, yep. Let me um, let me hit the minutes real quick first. If oh, that's yes. All right. Did people have a chance to read? Through, oh, did commission members have a chance to read through the February 21st, 2023 meeting minutes? If so, any uh, edits, corrections, changes? If not, does anybody need more time to read through them? Hearing nothing, I'm gonna then make a motion that we approve the minutes for our February 21st, 2023 meeting as I hear a second for accepting minutes. Second. All those in favor, starting with Lori. Aye. Paul. Aye. Jim. 
Aye. Julian. Aye. And Rebecca, I'm in I as well. Wonderful. And now, if you would be so kind as to walk us through those updates, it would be greatly appreciated. Sure. Um, so the enforcement order updates, we don't have any further update other than waiting for spring. And then the Century Mill Estates is, as previously, um, been stagnant in a sense. Um, with that, though, we did get the engineer's letter back, which I did send around or I put in your packet. Um, and then we did get the wetland scientist as well, which we received some time ago at this point. Uh, so we also have the Bolton Mass Trails, Bolton Trails Connectivity Improvement Project. Um, I've been working to review the original scope, review material amounts and costs, and then just coordinating a project schedule as well, because as previously stated, we want this to be um, involved with community organizations that want to participate if they're able to and giving them enough time to make sure that they're scheduling um, those days into uh, in days that make sense as well, weather wise. Mm -hmm. uh, the upcoming trail walk for our guided trail walks focusing on our summit series for this year will take place the last week of March. Uh, the trails committee meeting whom I like to coordinate the guided walks with um, because of caucus was last night, they have uh, pushed their meeting to next Monday. So after next Monday, I hope to have a date, but uh, it will be the last week of March and it will be held at the Fifeshire Dam Conservation Area. And we will be hiking to Peach Hill Road, which is the summit of Peach Hill um, in relative proximity. And then of course, a reminder about Big Night. So this is where we typically see a lot of amphibian initial migration, moving to their vernal pools, um, or either coming from the upland to the vernal pools or from vernal pool. And um, during these evenings, we see movement. I are, have already had quite a few individuals reach out to uh, be notified when we anticipate that to occur. Uh, as previously stated, it is a very last minute notification because the weather has to be pretty perfect. The conditions have to be perfect uh, for this to occur. And we also are working on the Nashua River Communities Resilient Lands Management Project. Um, as you've heard in the last couple of meetings, we're working on some bylaw and regulation updates. Right now, we're also reviewing some site visit locations that we're hoping to accomplish this spring. And then of course, we'll have a, a public meeting in uh, this late spring as well. So I'm hoping you're able to participate if your schedule allows. Uh, then we still have the volunteer land steward position available, and we have held our second meeting for the open space and recreation plan update. The tasks have been and sections have been assigned to our team members, and so we are moving forward with that. Our next meeting will be uh, the last Thursday in March. Excellent. Great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, should ask any commission members have any new business? Anything to share? Seeing none, um, I'd like to then make a motion that we hereby adjourn our uh, Tuesday, March 7, 2023 meeting of the Bolton Conservation Commission. Do I hear a second for adjourning? Second. All those in favor, starting with Lori. Aye. Paul? Aye. Jim? Aye. Jillian? Aye. And Rebecca, I am an I as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And I hope everyone has a great evening.